Hope delivers. Sometimes a heart-shaped rock appears during a walk through the woods, and I'm reminded of the hope that I have. In those simple yet effective reminders, God chooses to display a wink to let us know he's there. In the most unexpected moments, he comforts us. God's love caresses and is nurturing. Through it, he delivers peaceful security. He never sleeps or forgets us and considers each one of us to be the apple of his eye. With the very essence of God's nature, he is my everlasting hope. Chapter 2. The Villain. Adversity. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce you to someone you are probably already quite familiar with. In fact, you just might be lifelong acquaintances. An entity that goes by many names and aliases. A character both sinister and devious. So, without further ado, I present to you Adversity. Well, did you expect someone else? Perhaps a celebrity? A famous Nobel Peace Prize recipient? Or a world-renowned surgeon? Sorry to disappoint you. But please, make yourself comfortable as I delve into a more thorough description of this fiend. Adversity is like a raging rhinoceros that suddenly crashes through the doors of a tidy and pristine boutique. An exquisite storefront with displays of priceless glass ornaments, beautiful porcelain figurines, and elegant dinnerware. Oh my, you exclaim, is right. You can imagine the chaos immediately infused within this most peaceful and serene setting now abruptly turned upside down. At least 1,500,000 million fragments exploding similar to fairy dust in a Peter Pan motion picture and the behemoth rhino nowhere in sight, but a trail of said particles that remain as evidence of a quick four-legged escape made through an exit wound of drywall and ornately designed wallpaper. A disaster is an understatement, but that is exactly what we now have. So I hope you embrace my example and understand what we all are dealing with. All you ask? Yeah. We all encounter adversity in an assortment of terrible ways. From the moment we are born until the very moment we breathe our last, this villain is certain to wreak its best havoc on our collective lives. And consider this chilling thought. Adversity took a number and it is waiting patiently in line until it is called to enter everyone's life. For some, it's a terrible migraine headache that sidelines your best day. For others, it's an unexpected car wreck and a calendar filled with expensive medical appointments that follow. And for some, it's a life-threatening illness that throws jabs and punches every hour of every day. It's unmerciful. No matter the trial, ugly circumstance, or human tragedy, the adverse situation will most definitely appear in our lives. The punchline is this, we don't know when or what it will look like. Jesus said it this way in John 16, verse 33. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. I love how he told this so that we may have peace in him, not peace in our own supposed sufficiency or in our ability to create a safe haven that can provide security from disaster. No, he said we may have peace in him. What an amazing statement. Jesus is our peace and sometimes in our course of life we completely miss or overlook this fact. Our human framework all too often relies upon our own ability which can navigate our hearts away from depending on him for that peace that security, and that assurance. Jesus said we can have peace in him. So why do we go around him in search of it? Maybe we don't truly believe that Jesus is our peace when we give him dominion over our lives. Maybe we strongly believe and hold on to 
the grip that this world, this life, had on us. Before we surrendered to his majesty for salvation, we were caught in a web, like a prisoner in chains, and so distracted by our surroundings, our day-to-day -day existence. But because of God's grace and mercy, we were rescued from despair and from the chokehold life once strangled us with. Think about it. Each day you probably woke up gasping for air, figuratively speaking, I hope, and felt the mounting pressure begin to weigh you down. I mean, right out of the gate, as you slipped off of your comfy mattress and pressed your feet onto the cold floor, you muttered with disdain, here I go again, right? The same crud, different day. The rut of just surviving, but not thriving. Then salvation called your name and you came running. The blinders were removed and the chains of despair were destroyed by Jesus. From that moment on, you wore the banner of his victory upon your life, and you could now face the day with a terrific boldness because of his love for you. The days were brighter. The sun spread its warmth over you deeper. This perspective of life allowed for hope to suddenly appear in each new day. You jumped off of your bed, with an opportunity to live in victorious fashion because of his love. You took your day's first steps with a sense of upbeat charisma because of his love. You found God's purpose in the hours ahead and a drive with meaning because of his love. There is nothing or no one who could stop his powerful love for you. Thank you, Romans 8, verse 31, for reminding us of this powerful truth. Then, adversity called your number, and you crashed. The realities of this life sucker punched you and you crumbled. Now what? Remember, we don't know when or what adversity will look like, but the most certainly adversity is on time, just like clockwork. And it knows exactly what your life consists of. It knows your daily routine, it hears you utter your own fears, it understands your weaknesses, and it even knows your knee-jerk reactions to some of its best ploys to steal your joy. Yeah, this monster is slick and diabolical for sure. With malicious intent, affliction waits patiently to unleash some sort of pain and measure of suffering upon you. Hardship breathes by your distress and feeds upon your fear. Want to hear the good news? Of course you do. Well, adversity is always on time and is allowed into our lives, but is kept on a leash. That's right, a leash, like a rabid wild dog. A leash that restricts, limits its touch, regulates its power, and controls its effect upon our lives. Don't believe me? Read the story of Job in the Bible. The beginning of this amazing story tells us that Job was a God-fearing, blameless man and that he stayed away from evil. He lived with integrity and had God's favor upon him. Then we see the adversary, the devil, the accuser, and he was looking for someone to pounce on like a hungry lion. Then God did something that blows my mind. He offered Job to be persecuted, places him directly into the hands of the enemy. But, and this is huge, but he limits the devil with specific restrictions, hence the leash. At this point in chapter one, God only allows the master of disaster open reign upon Job's family and his possessions not Job physically. The point I'm making here is that the villain was allowed by the hero only limited affliction to the victim. Satan was given specific orders by God who was in control of Job's situation completely. Now don't lose heart in chapter one. Please, I ask that you read the entire book all the way through and explore God's truth in his living word. 
Yes, even though Job was stricken in so many ways, his children died, his possessions destroyed and taken, and his own body crushed with illness. Yet he remained faithful to the Lord and stayed the course of obedience. Job is made of the same fabric and spirit we all are. You see, undoubtedly his life is consecrated to the majesty and presence God had in his life. Job made the decision to serve the true and living God, to live with integrity and walk humbly with him, to remain faithful to God in the face of danger and ultimate destruction, to remain hopeful as the waters of calamity rose to life-threatening levels. And Job had the most powerful hope that could ever be possessed in anyone's life, the hope of God. Is there really any other? The same God who reigned in Job's life is the same God who reigns in our lives today. Remember that God willingly placed Job in harm's way, not as a sadistic means, but rather he knew and believed in Job. God lovingly looks upon us and cheers for us every time we're at bat, have the football, put on that uniform, go to work or school each day, or step into a new adventure with opportunity for us to shine powerfully. It may not look like that from your standpoint, but be assured God believes in you. Wait, you may have been taking a bite of your toppling ice cream sundae, so I'll repeat that. God believes in you. I like how Bob Goff puts it in reference to God's view of us. He doesn't grimace at our failures. He delights in our attempts. So, adversity is a punk and is on the prowl to destroy our moments and eventually our lives. But remember that God has put limits on it not the other way around. So let us live with that powerful expectancy. Let us thrive and push forward with the most secure hope we can possess. Embrace God's love and let him hold you through your storm.